expecting to receive. God does not change. We know that from the book of Malachi, the third chapter. God does not change. However, look at me. I am in a constant state of change. Amen. Every Christian is. Uh, 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 some people get up and say, I've never changed my mind since I first... Well, I, I'm growing still. I'm still learning. Uh, I, I'm not here to tell you I never change my mind. I'm not to he here to tell you I remain the same. I'm not to tell, here to tell you that I remain constant. I'm here to tell you that Jesus never changes. That he doesn't change his mind, doesn't change his will, doesn't change his word, doesn't change who he is. I'm not here to remain the same. I'm here to keep on growing. I'm growing and I'm coming into the knowledge of God. How can I explain that? When I was a child, I spake as a child. I did childish things. But God began to grow me, and now I don't act like a child anymore. The, the more God teaches me, the more I grow up in God. We're not perfect, but Jesus is. The more that I, I realize about Jesus, that he was the perfected, perfected man in the flesh. He was what God wanted to create in us. But we, man, failed. But Jesus is perfect. And when I see the life of Jesus, I know that's the way God really wanted us to be. God wanted to create a perfect man walking around in the flesh. The baby in the manger was not the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world, God had to do that flesh with the Holy Ghost power that came from heaven. The flesh was not God. The flesh is flesh. The flesh is the son of Mary. But what lived inside that flesh was the, what the Bible says is the fullness of the Godhead. God grew Jesus. He matured him. Jesus is the way that God wanted man to be. The secret of the Bible is this. Listen carefully. You say there's a secret. The Bible describes it as a mystery. The mystery is revealed when Jesus got here, and the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 said this mystery that was hidden from them in the old times, in past generations, is now revealed to you. It was hidden from the apostles uh, up until a certain day. It was hidden from the prophets in the Old Testament. All of that Jesus said the law and the prophets were until John. After this, we have a new revelation from God. The new revelation is, is God's not on the mountain. The new revelation is, is God doesn't live in Israel. The new revelation is God is not up there behind the moon keeping Jupiter and Mars from running into each other. The new revelation is, is God is right here. It's Christ in us. The new revelation is God's not on the mountain. God's not in a building, but he is in you and me because that's what he planned. The fullness of the Godhead dwelt in him bodily. I know you want to talk about baptism and Godhead when I quote that scripture, but that's not what it's talking about. It said everything that there is about God is now in this man, Jesus Christ. When he walked, he walked as God would walk. When he talked, he talked what God would say. When he healed the sick, it was God in him healing the sick. Jesus said, by the way, 49 times in the Gospel of John that he was on divine orders, that God was sending him here. What he said is not my words, but the words of him who sent me. When you see me walking right, I'm telling you today, when you see me walking right and you hear me talking right, it's not Ross Collette, it's Jesus in me. Hallelujah. And if you see any good thing about me or about you, I pray that it's only God in you and that God gets the glory for what he does in you and I. They said, good master. He said, wait a minute. Don't call me good, for there is only one good, and that's my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. But he said to you and I, he said, not only am I going to show, I don't, I don't want to be put up on a, on a rock somewhere and worshiped and adored. Gee, you know, the world wants to do that. They want to say, you know, Jesus is, a, 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 and they drag his picture out twice a year. Amen. They drive, uh, drag his picture out, or what they think is a picture 
of a baby in a manger. Can I tell you, that was the son of Mary. That was not the son of God. The son of God did not actually show up hallelujah in that body until John baptized Jesus in the river of Jordan and a, a, a dove the Holy Spirit came down from heaven and said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased you want to know something child of God everything that you and I have to go through Jesus went through it just like you he didn't come down here and say I'm the son of God bow down and worship me he came here and he called himself the son of man are you every time it mentions him he's the son of man but something happened to Jesus hallelujah on top of that mount of transfiguration when Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus and St. Peter when he wrote about it he said I was an eyewitness to the glory and the coming and the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah he said I was there when on that mountain there appeared Moses and Elijah and all of a sudden a voice came out of the cloud and it said wait a minute this is my beloved son this is my beloved son hear him and he said when we looked up again Moses disappeared Elijah disappeared what happened and they saw no man save Jesus only Matthew 17 they saw no man save Jesus only why was it important that you only see Jesus I'm telling you right now Moses did not save you he didn't even have what I got Elijah did not save you. Hallelujah. He didn't even have what you and I have. The Holy Ghost was not yet given. You say, well, look what they did. Yes, God had special men and special women that he used according to his will at certain times, but the Holy Ghost did not abide upon them. When God got through using him, the Holy Ghost went back to heaven where God, where God was. Instead, they were anointed at certain times to do certain things, and they were anointed for a special task. But that's not the way I am. When the Holy Ghost got inside me down there at that altar of prayer and I began to speak in an unknown tongue, a tongue that I did not understand, and fire got down in my soul. Anointing got down in my soul. And when I stood up, hallelujah, I was more than a new creature. Now I'm a new creature full of the Holy Ghost, full of the power of God. God did not limit it. God did not say, I'm going to give you a little power, but I'm holding back. Instead, Jesus turned around and said, if you believe in me, the works that I do, what I, what I have taught you to do, what you have heard of me doing, what you have seen me do, you shall do also. But greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my Father. And it's good for you that I go away because you will not be empowered unless I send the Holy Ghost back to you. Hallelujah. Ten day, well, 20 days later, 40 days later, they were gathered together in an upper room and all of a sudden there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind and cloven tongues as a fire fell upon each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in new tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Well, you say, Brother Ross, uh, uh, why aren't the miracles here? I'm asking you the same thing today. The miracles are here. You're a miracle. Where would you have been right now if it had not been for the Lord? Where would you be right now if it had not been for Jesus? Where would I be right now? I'd been dead when I was 13 years old. But God spared me and God saved me. And he has a reason for it. The fullness of the God had dwelt in him bodily. And he expects the fullness of the Godhead to dwell in you bodily. I'm to walk as he walked, talk as he talked, do what he did, but not just what he did. God has called this generation to do more than what he did. Greater works than these shall you do. But most of us nowadays, we won't pray the simple prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. We have faith preachers who preach against it. Don't ever say, Father, let thy will be done. You don't have to say that. Well, I'm telling you right now, I pray that every day. God, not my will, thy will be done. Not me, Lord, it's you. Not who I am, it's who you are. Not what I say, it's what you say. Not what I do, it's what you do. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the fullness of the Godhead must dwell in you bodily. Otherwise, you'll be jumping up thinking that you did something by your, your power. You did something by your faith. No wonder the church doesn't have any power today because everybody's trying to do it because they have great faith, because they're holy. I'm going to tell you, there ain't one of them holy. No, not one. None of us are holy. The only holiness about me is the God spirit that lives on the inside of me. Jesus never said, I'm going to heal the sick, but it's not for you. He never said, I will open blind eyes, but don't try this at home. Jesus never said, I will make the lame walk, but you stay out of my hospital. Jesus never said any of that. Jesus repeatedly said, everything I do, you're going to do it also. If I anoint you, the Holy Ghost gets in you. Come on here, church. You're you're a water walker. Hallelujah. You're a blind eye opener. Come on, say amen. You're a fish and loaves multiplier. You're a, uh, you're a man that can make the lame walk. Hallelujah. You're a woman that is anointed of the Holy Ghost to speak the word and bind the power of the enemy and bind the power of the devil and say, get behind me. Get, get away from my door. Turn loose. Hallelujah. You and I right now are filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. It's in my bones. Hallelujah. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I wish I had a bigger voice. Hallelujah. I wish I was on more radio. I wish I was on more TV. I wish more people, I wish the mayor knew who I was. Hallelujah. So I could stand up at City Hall and declare it. I'd go to the state capitol and I'd say it there, but they won't listen. Instead, you can't get this unless God calls you to have it do you know how unique you are in this world seven billion people that we know about and here we are a handful of people we're unique in Detroit we're unique in Michigan there's not many like us there's not many like us who believe in the full power of God, who believe that God anointed Jesus and he went forth healing the sick and casting out devils. They think it's for another time and another generation. Hallelujah. Instead, Jesus came and he said, the works that I did, yes, you saw me do, you're going to do them also. And greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my Father and I'm going to empower you to do the works that I do. You've been an entered apprentice. You've been a apprentice under me learning the skills learning what to do learning how to pray I hope when you come to church and you're in this revival service you don't sit around and just watch and observe and see what other people are doing instead I hope you enter in I hope you understand we're going to school right now this is a school of ministry this is a school of faith this is a school of growing in God this is a school of empowering hallelujah I've been an apprentice long enough now I'm I I've become what God wanted me to be. This is how I did it, Jesus said. Now you do it. Hallelujah. I know you, can, you can't do it by yourself, and so I am sending you the power of the Holy Ghost that he may abide in you forever. I got news for you right now. The devil's quaking in his shoes somewhere. He's shaking right now because I'm saying this to you. God is wanting to get a message to you that you have the power that Jesus had. You have the anointing that Jesus had. It is in you. You have a greater power and a greater anointing than the prophets in the Old Testament. They were good. They came as far as they could. But just like the Spirit of God came down upon Samson and he had the power to slay a thousand Philistines and carry off the gates of the city, there came a time when he was laying there and the Holy Ghost, that power of God, that great strength of God went back to God. And he was laying there an ordinary man sleeping in the lap of sin. <laughs> That's what some people think this is now. I can get in the pulpit and the Holy Ghost comes upon me, but then I can go out and do whatever I want to. That's not God's plan. God's with me and God's with you. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, he will abide with you forever. I will not leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of this world. And when there is no more world, God's not going to leave me then. He's going to call me on up a little bit higher. And I'm going to be with the Lord forever. You are too because greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Somebody clap your hands if you believe it. I'm telling you something right now. The world wants you to think seriously. 
that Jesus is up there somewhere. I hear these wimpy preachers preach this all the time. Oh, yeah, Jesus is up there on his throne and, and the Holy Ghost kind of floating around here somewhere and he's on the right hand of God and uh, that's where he is, way up there, a long way off. That's not true. That's a lie. Jesus don't live up there somewhere. You want to know where Jesus lives? I'm going to show you right now where Jesus lives. Is anybody saying amen to that? You know what? know where God is? Here he is right here. You say, I can't see that. Well, you're full of the devil then. Come on, church, say amen. Huh? They delivered to, at the synagogue there in, in, in Jesus' hometown of uh, Capernaum or Capernaum. Uh, while I was just there uh, a, a short while ago, and I stood in that very spot where the synagogue was, where Jesus was, where he said this. They delivered to him the uh, book of the prophet Isaiah, and here he began to read. Behold, the Spirit, nobody ever read like this in church. You know, they get in that, in that kind of monotone, that whiny, wimpy kind of sound. And you know God said this, and then he did that, and he went over here. Can I tell you, that's not how Jesus read it. There wasn't no wimping around with Jesus. He said, Behold, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to cast out devils. He has anointed me to bind up the broken. Hallelujah. He has anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then everybody said, what, what did he say? I thought he was reading the Bible here. I thought he's reading Scripture. Hallelujah. You no, know, he read it with himself in mind. He read it talking about him. He said, this day this Scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. And you know what happened? Of course, the devil came to church on that day, and he stood up, and the devil threw him down in the floor. Hallelujah. And Jesus went down there and said, come out of him. And the devil left that time. Man with a withered arm sitting there and couldn't stretch it forth. And Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. You see, Jesus just didn't talk about it. He was there to do something about it. He was there to heal the sick. This is what God has done. The world wants you to think Jesus is up there in heaven somewhere a long way up. He's up there. And we're down here. We're struggling with our faith. Oh, Lord, I hear these wimpy prayers prayed in churches everywhere. And they're saying, oh, Lord, look down upon your people, Lord. We're down here, Lord, and we're struggling, and we're trying to live above sin. We're trying to live a good life. Shut up! That's what the world wants you to believe. The world wants you to believe that everything is evil. God tells you everything is good. The world wants you to believe everything is dark. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. You go into a dark place, strike a light. Hallelujah. The world wants to believe it's sickness, but you're the healer of the sick. Hallelujah. God didn't put me here to fit in with this world. Hallelujah. The world gives you, God, a building to go live in. They build, See, there, there's a church we built for God. God, uh, You want to see God? Go over there to that church. You, you can get something there in that church. Uh, we want to build them with stained glass windows so God feels more comfortable there. We want to build them with a tower to ring them golden bells. So God, and you want to see God? Well, go to church. That's where God, God ain't in church. God ain't been, never been in most of these places. You say, how do I know that, Brother Ross? Because there ain't no works. There's no healing the sick. There's no one getting saved. There's no casting out devils. The lame are not walking. The blind eyes are not opening. Hallelujah. People do not get up and they're healed. Their life is not changed. Don't tell me God goes into that place. If he did, everything would be different. Everywhere Jesus went, he healed the sick. He met blind men and gave them sight. He met deaf men and made them hear again. He met impure women and purified them again. He met people that were thirsty and he gave them water to drink. Hallelujah. He met the hungry and he gave them food to eat. He even had to multiply it and give it out. Hallelujah. Everywhere Jesus went, he was a miracle worker. He was a miracle worker. And now, listen to what he did. There's only one of me while I'm standing here on this ground. But I'm going up there. 
And when I get there, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And he is going to abide in you forever. Hallelujah. When you need me, all you have to do is say, Jesus, and hell will back up. Demons will tremble. It will quench the violence of fire because you got the same power in you. Hallelujah. I know what the world wants to say. They want to conform you. I didn't come here to fit in. Well, Brother Ross, if you just do this, then, you know, more people would think you're an all right guy. I came here, you know, not to pull a picture of Jesus in the, in, you know, my mom had a picture of Jesus in the garden hanging, and everybody would go there and they'd stop and they'd look at, gee, that wasn't Jesus. That was an artist. That wasn't Jesus there. I never saw anybody come up to me and just stare at me. And, and what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to get close to Jesus. <laughs> People don't think that way. We've been taught something totally different. Hallelujah. They don't try to include Jesus in the here and now. They want Jesus two or three times a year. They want to drag him like it's up to them to drag him out of the closet and put up that little Christmas tree or get their cross out and hang it on the wall and say, it's Christmas time. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Or they want to come at, at Easter time and say, oh, he's risen from the dead. How would they know? They're repeating something that they've heard. God doesn't live in the churches that just because they have a big church and a bell towers. As a matter of fact, I have found out that God doesn't seek out crowds. Jesus never sought out crowds. Crowds would follow him after they saw what God did through him, but Jesus never sought them out. Instead, you want to know what Jesus was looking for? He's looking for the same thing today, and when he comes back again, he's still looking for the same thing. He's looking for faith. He's looking for a a man or a woman who has faith it doesn't have to be a crowd it can be just one or two it can be you by yourself if God, hallelujah when you have faith in your heart Jesus is going to come to you hallelujah when you have faith in your heart the sick are going to be healed when you have faith in your heart God honors faith he ignores everything else he honors faith before Jesus fed all that 5,000 people you know, he, he called the disciples to him and he sent them over and he set them down in groups of 50 and, and, and asked them, have you been good? Uh, are you a good person? Or uh, Have you been going to church? Do you beat your wife or do you feed your children? Jesus didn't do any of that. You know why? It's not based on that. Religion's taught us that. Religion's taught, well, it's how you act. That's going to make you go to heaven. No, it's how I'm saved. Come on, say amen here. If I'm saved, you don't have to worry about my actions. God will plumb them by the plumb line. God will take care of my actions if I get saved. What I'm worried about is getting people saved not making them give them a set of rules to follow. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to make uh, your faith stretch a little bit. Hallelujah. I want to get you up out of your seat of comfort. You got a comfort zone. Well, uh, and you figured it all out in your head. Well, the world tells you you work 40 years for a living, 40 hours a week for a living, and send it on down the line, uh, make your mortgage, uh, uh, go home after work, grab a little food, watch a little TV, and get up in the morning and do the same, mow the grass. This is what the world has told us and tried to convince people that happiness is. Happiness is doing the will of God. Happiness is doing the will of God. If you need a house, God will give you a house. You need a car, God will give you a car. You need an airplane, God will give you an airplane. And if you can't find any of those, hallelujah, God will pick you up from one spot and set you down in another. God, my God, is able. God knows what he's doing. I'm here to get you to lay down that remote control. I'm here to get you up and get you over there to minister to your neighbor. Hallelujah. I had a very well educated man who was a psychoanalyst. He said, well, I so much feel sorry for you. And I said, why are you feeling sorry for me? Well, you don't have a home. You don't have any family. You don't have any money laid up. You're not, uh, it, it's as though you're, when you die, you have no plans. You, 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 where, how are you going to take care of your family? Uh, you, you, I feel sorry for you. You're alone most of the time. 
And that's when I stopped him. I said, I, you know, I go all along with all that other junk, but I'm never alone. I'm hand in hand with Jesus. If I, you don't see folks, hang, my posse, don't hang around with me all day long. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. I'm with Jesus. Jesus is all I need. Hallelujah. Jesus is what he promised me. God promised me Jesus. He promised me he'd give me him. I'm not of this world anyhow. Don't expect me to fit in. Don't expect me to go to the convention. Don't expect me to act like all those other goofy religious people. I'm not going to do it. You can't put me into that mold. Don't try to put me in that mold, and I dare you to try to put yourself in that mold. You've been in my church service. You're not going to fit in in any of these so-called mainline denominational churches. Hallelujah, whether they're Pentecostal or not. It doesn't, you're not going to fit in there anymore. You can't go out and be a Presbyterian now hallelujah you can't go out and be a Baptist now you're only fooling yourself once you have tasted the anointing of God you can never go back you're not in this world to fit into something else hallelujah I'm not of this world what are you brother Ross I am an ambassador I've been sent into a far country hallelujah this world is not my home I'm just passing through Hallelujah. I'm here to be misunderstood. I'm here to be lied on. Come on, James. Talked about. Mistreated. Hallelujah. Cheated. Put down. Hallelujah. But as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Y'all ain't going to talk to me because you, you got to have your network. You got to have your network of friends that you, you, you write to and say, oh, I'm going through a hard thing today. Would you? I need a lot of prayer and support. You never saw anything like that from me. I never told anybody I need a lot of prayer and support. Matter of fact, I wonder at people why they're even wasting their time praying for me. You know, I know, does anybody here know Jesus beside me? Yes. Anybody here have the Holy Ghost beside me? If you got the Holy Ghost, why are you, why are you going to trying to get somebody else to pray for you for? Yeah. Hallelujah. God didn't call you to form a prayer group. What God called you to do is lay hands on the sick and see them recover. God didn't call you to go into therapy. I know I'm getting out on the limb here because I'm tearing out down all your little sacred cows that you worship. We got, oh, you know, God's people got to get together. We'll get together. Don't worry about it. We'll get together on what the Bible says. I ain't getting together with some stuff. I ain't going to no Muslim temple for anything. I ain't going to a Jewish one for anything. I'm not here to fit in with that. I'm not here to fit in with the politics. I was, wa I was watching this movie the other night, uh, uh, Fishburne. He's a real great actor. He's one of my favorite ones. And, and uh, uh, Keanu Reeves, great actor. And he said, in my hand are two pills. There's a red pill and there's a blue pill. If you take the blue pill, you'll wake up tomorrow and go through your life and never know anything happened. But if you take the red pill, You'll see how things really are. They forgot one other pill, the gospel pill. Hallelujah. Because I don't care what the blue ones do, and I don't care what the red. They're still pills, and I ain't on pills. Hallelujah. I'm on the Word of God. I live by that. I'm not into this. See, I don't fit in, do I? I don't fit into this. I don't have my, my little twizzle, twizzle thing. What do they call that, the finger it's? I don't, I don't have a hula hoop. I don't go along with fads. I don't wear my pants down. You know, I met a guy up here in the parking lot, and his pants were way down here. And I said, I said, son, hold on just a minute. Over in the trunk of my car, I got a belt for you. I, you must have forgot your belt at home. I, I said, I've gone out before, and my pants just kind of slipped down. I had to keep pulling them up, and, and I'll get you a belt. See, there's fads that go around. You see it on TV, and that's what you want to do. Uh, you, you see it in a situation, uh, 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 in one of those comedies, that makes you think, well, maybe I really am gay. 
you, you watch them and you think, well, maybe I really do want to commit adultery. You watch those things and you say, maybe I really don't like my children. Maybe it's all right to take drugs. Maybe it's all right to do all, because I saw it on television. You know, people must be doing that. You see it on TV, and all of a sudden this garbage gets in your mind. I didn't come to fit into this. I, I'm not of this world. I came here, hallelujah. And they look at me, and I've, I'll tell you right now, I feel like I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the coming of the Lord. The day of the Lord is at hand. They look at me and feel sorry for me. I look at them as though they are naked, they're wretched, they're blind, and they're miserable. You say, oh, Brother Ross, they're not miserable. They're having the time of their life. Yeah, I've talked to some of these people having the time of their life. Starting as soon as they get off of work on Friday night, they drink until they finally try to sober up with some pills and so they can get to work on time on Monday morning. And then they got a headache. They, they might as well come in at, at Monday at Monday night. It ain't going to be no good to nobody. They get to work, and the first thing they do, they have to go puke in the bathroom before after they, clock, after they clock in, though. And they think, oh, that's living. Boy, did we have a time there. We really tied one on. You idiot. We really, oh, man, we had a great time. You got drunk, dummy. Oh, you ought to try some of this. <laughs> well, that's what the world's answer is. And that's why you walk around here in this world full of zombies. I didn't think I knew that word, did you, huh? These are zombies. They walk around. They ain't got no mind. They got to watch somebody on TV. <laughs> they got to watch Puff Daddy Snoop Doggy Doo Doo. Amen. <laughs> they watch him, and then they figure out what they really like. Oh, oh, that's in? The people do that? You'll, well, I guess so. They're doing it. Hallelujah. Do I have to look at that? No. God gave me a vision. God gave me a vision that's not like the world vision. God gave me a vision of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I look at his face, though looking in a glass darkly. I look at him every day, and I am conformed and I'm changed. I'm not trying to be like this world. I'm trying to be uh, not conformed to the world, but I'm, being, I'm trying to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm in this world, not of it. I'm an ambassador sent to a far country. But one of these days, I'm going to be called home. Hallelujah. And when I go, hallelujah, I'm going to take my rewards with me. Somebody shout amen. I know what God is getting ready to do, and it's greater than anything you can ask or think. Many people thought they were helping me by inflicting me with their religious doctrines. Oh, well, see, if you believe it this way, then your whole, uh, you'll be changed. I thought, they thought they were helping me. They were hurting me. I followed things and thought it was helping me, but it was destroying me inside. Listen, there's only one thing going to make you whole. That's the power of the Holy Ghost in your heart. Only God can do this. Only Jesus can do this. Nobody else can. Doctrines can't. Religious leaders can't. World uh, religions can't do it. No one else that I know can do it. Only Jesus. There's a hole on the inside of every man. You look like a donut. There is a hole on the inside of you. Hallelujah. That hole can only be filled by one thing. It has to be filled by the anointing of God and the gift of the Holy Ghost in your life. If you don't have it hallelujah if you don't have that if you don't have the holy ghost don't tell me you got what you got money your money's gonna burn up one day oh you got a big house i've seen big houses burn up hallelujah i've seen you got a car i've seen the earth open up and swallow cars brand new ones right down in the middle of it car don't matter house don't matter hallelujah there's only one thing that matters and that's the gift of the holy ghost that's in your life don't turn it loose of it don't give up on him hallelujah when everything turns against you and everything is bad don't turn loose of god keep your hand to the plow hold 
on to him in the midst of trouble. Call on his name in the midst of a storm. Yell out to Jesus, Lord, save me or I'll perish. If you don't do that, hallelujah. You know, you got to go home, you got to grab a little bite to eat, grab a little TV, you know, see what the, the ball team's doing so you'll have something to talk about at the water cooler at, at lunchtime with all them other losers that don't have anything else to do but watch TV. I say, I'm, I'm crossing these all, uh, people to offend. I, I, I mean, <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, look at me now, and don't be mad at me when I say this. Some of you are ruining your life with politics. You're ruining your life with politics. Well, I'm for this one. I'm for that one. I'm for, I want this. I want that. Listen, why do, in all of them prayers that you've been praying, oh, God, let him get elected. Oh, Lord, let her get elected. Would you just quit? I'm going to tell you right now. I have watched this year all the shenanigans going on in Washington, D.C., and it has not made one dollar for me, and it has not made one penny of success for anybody I know. I don't know anybody that said, oh, I got richer because I watched that testimony on TV. You did. I mean, unless you're selling beer or something while you're watching it, which is what they did. Yeah, let's watch uh, uh, the testimony on TV. You want another drink? Five about five dollars. We oh, I'm sorry. We raised the price slightly because we have to turn on the television. <laughs> Nobody's listening to me here today. Oh, I got richer. Listen, I've known people in this world that were powerful people. I videotaped myself, Ronald Reagan, when he was running for governor of California. Uh, I, I rode in a car from here uh, to Cleveland with Martin Luther King Jr. I walked up Woodward Avenue right in after the riots were over. I was in Cleveland when it happened. Can I tell you something right now? That's wonderful experience. I'm glad I did all of that. I'm, I'm glad I met a lot of people. I mean, I met everybody. Ted Cruz, uh, Eugene, uh, not Eugene O'Neill, but Tip O'Neill. I met a lot of these folks. I, I, went, to, I went to Washington, D see to pray to Congress one day and they had another preacher do it instead the thing I'm trying to tell you right now is this all of this stuff didn't make me one bit better it's not going to make you better what it's going to do is make you get mad at somebody close to you which is exactly what the devil wanted all the time he wants you to be mad he wants you to be mad at somebody would you just quit God didn't call you to run in politics anyway. If you, God wanted you to run in politics, you're in the wrong place here. You need to forget church. Because if you're a Christian nowadays and you go to church, politics is not for you. Uh, world stage is not for you. Because they ridicule us on every hand. They put us down on every side. You have to understand here, there is something more important than politics. And listen, America got along a long time before me. America will get along a long time after me. I'm preaching too long. I done went to meddling. You can cling to your illusions if you want to. But you don't have to. God has called us. The chosen of God need not fear. Now what's going to come on this earth? God foreknew his elect before the foundation of the world. He already knew me before I was born. He knew you before you were born. He knew you were coming. He knew what he wanted you to do. I stand tall in the battlefield. Hallelujah. We do not fear. And we, God's people are not cowards. We will not sit down. Hallelujah. We will stand up for Jesus. Mountains of doubt will crumble. And mountains of fear will fall down around us. Sickness and disease will depart when you pray. Join hands with somebody right now. Anyone.